You already know I'm rocking with DJ Khan here on WTSP 380.12. Any cotton around here lately? Cotton, DJ yo, cotton. my name is my name. You're listening to DJ Cotton here. Federal, 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 I'm rocking with DJ Cotton. You already know what it is. Welcome back to a conversation with Sean Puffy Combs. Combs and his friend Notorious B.I.G. were early architects, on video anyway, of the glitzy, babe-filled player lifestyle. For Biggie Smalls, however, that sort of street-style swagger was mainly an acquired characteristic. So, so what was Biggie like when you first met him? I mean, he was kind of... When I, when I first met Biggie, he was real quiet and shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was real quiet and shy. He would barely Jay talk, Cotton. you know. Really? Like, you would be... We, you'd have to... I would have to force him to talk to have a conversation <laughs> with me. He would just be there and observing. Mm. And it was just that, you know, he didn't know... It, it, was, it was such a big deal to him. This was a dream come true to to finally have a chance to be a rapper that, mm -hmm. you know, I think he was overwhelmed by it. He just wanted to be quiet and just, you know, enjoy it and not, you know, it's almost like, you know, if you talk too loud in the room, somebody may kick you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think he wanted to make sure he stayed in the room. And Did he change room. a lot between Ready to Die and, and Life After Death? I mean, was he a different person? After yeah, as a person, he definitely, he changed a lot. Like, there was, um, on Ready to Die, it was real, very, real personal. It wasn't like it, he wasn't really enjoying making the music as much. He was he was just trying to give you his story. Mm -hmm. um, on this album, on Life After Death, he really enjoyed making the music. And then he's he's had um, a son since then, mm -hmm. and a daughter. And I mean, just his family life. He enjoyed his kids a lot more. And just as a person, he was growing as a person. We all. You know, we're in this and we're blessed to have the success that we have at a young age. But at the same time, it's like we're still just growing up. We're still making mistakes. Now on this, this whole, the whole East Coast versus West Coast thing, do you just wonder what was that all about? I mean, have you figured out what it was all about? No, I mean, I haven't fig figured out what it was all about. I just know it was something that was negative that I would say fans ran with, mm. the media ran with, a lot of artists ran with, and it's just something that that got out of control as far as also as far as from a divide and conquer situation it would be self-defeating for me as a um a person having a record company and a person that's trying to be successful all over the world to alienate right. half of the country that i'm making music for you know it just wouldn't it would be unintelligent and then the whole time we were going through it we, we were so embarrassed. What did you feel when Tupac put out the, the hit him up the single and just took Biggie apart? I mean, Biggie must have been destroyed by that, was he not? No, I mean, he, he was hurt not because of the words, because he was just like, he didn't really understand why this man had so much hatred for him, you know what I'm saying? Biggie, nor myself, had nothing to do whatsoever of um, Tupac being robbed or shot yeah. in New York City at and the as studio. You point out, had Tupac no, suit, saw the people that shot him, so... Had, had no had no knowledge of him going to be robbed and we we that's just a fact anything else is a fantasy and when biggie heard it he was hurt by it because he really regarded tupac as a friend they, they had good times that's how they met they their relationship before that situation is that they were friends and he would never do nothing nor myself or anybody associated with me would have never done nothing to hurt him. And in fact, he had helped us when Biggie was first getting out there. They were um, together. He would let Biggie open dates for him. Yeah. And, I mean, he was appreciative and I was appreciative. And it was a shock to us. And it's something that we tried our best to do anything to alleviate any type of negativities as far as that situation. That's why we never made any records yeah. going back. We never said any negative DJ statements. Cotton. And the statements that we did say was that we want a, a resolution to it in a positive way. Everybody has to be accountable, even myself. I have to be accountable and have to be responsible to bring my son up the right way. And I have to be accountable and responsible for even the music that I put out. Mm -hmm. I have to do whatever I could do to put as much positivity out there. And it may, and I'm not talking about just going out and making a record, stop the violence. And, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm talking about making records that give you a good feeling, making sure that I understand what's coming out of one of my artist's mouths and how I could use my intelligence and my wisdom of things that I've seen to, to try to 
make sure that there you get your point across as an artist, but also at the same time, maybe you could say it another way and get your point across to where as it won't look like you think this is all right, because this is not all right. Yeah. Could you give us anything specific? I mean, is there any specific time somebody has tried to do a rap that was, you've changed a little bit? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, you know, Biggie has wrote that, that I did change, yeah. you know. In what way? I mean, he would be he would be saying something just to try to get his point across as far as as rap wise, just trying mm -hmm. to relate one thing to another, and it could have come across yeah. um, in a negative way. Like he said um, one time, he he was talking about how first time for give me the loop, and he was talking about how he just how he went in, he, he had to rob somebody in order to survive, in order to eat. Yeah. You know, I tried my best to do it. You know, I try my best to do that much, but even I have to be accountable that maybe also I should have done it more, and I have to, I have to be accountable for that. She don't want to be with you, she want a countryside player, hear Cotton's name and she turn it all away up. Got y'all listening to X mixes while you lay up, listening to your weakness and she's struggling trying to stay up. Don't be bitter, he's more realer, just more- Okay, 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 that's enough. You're not just gonna keep using me for singing hooks. What I look like, a Shanti or somebody? Let's just get on with this mixtape. You're listening to DJ Cotton here.